Welcome back, everybody. How are sustainability and technology remaking the future of farming and in the process, producing a tomato that is even Martha Stewart approved, believe it or not. Julie Hyman has the latest on that story with the CEO of App Harvest down at South by Southwest. Hi, Julie. Thanks, Brad. Hi. Uh, thanks so much for that. Indeed, Martha Stewart approved. She's on the board of the company and... She likes the tomatoes. I mean, they're tomatoes. They're delicious uh, if, if farmed correctly. Jonathan Webb, uh, CEO of App Harvest, is indeed with me. Before we dig into the heavy stuff, why don't you tell us that story about uh, sending Martha Stewart the tomato? Yeah, so i uh, been very fortunate to have Martha on our board and, and really consider her a mentor. And anybody as an entre- entrepreneur looks up to her, I'm sure. I know we do. Uh, but very attention to detail. And before we send any product out to stores initially, uh, I can assure you I was there with the team, uh, you know, getting that package up to, to Martha and got the phone call that thumbs up, they taste great, send them out. So we were uh, first night sending those up a little nervous to, to get the feedback. But uh, yeah, she's been an a incredible resource for us and just a, a huge name in food that uh, has been been very helpful with us early on. Well, great. Um, you guys, not long ago, I believe at the end of February, came out with your numbers. And you also talked about your goals for this year. Right now, you have one operational farm. So to be clear to, to everyone watching, these are indoor farms. It's a controlled environment. Mm. Vertical farming is another uh, word that people use for it. And you're aiming to open three more farms by the end of the year and also expand your product offerings beyond tomatoes. Um, are you going to meet the target? I mean, you know, you have to get building materials. You have to get labor, which is challenging in some places right now. How's the project looking? Uh, we're really, really proud of our team uh, in Kentucky that's been able to really navigate uh, the supply chain issues in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, we have three more facilities coming online this year, uh, totaling about 8 million square feet. And to put that in perspective, uh, our Moorhead facility, just under 3 million square feet, is about 50 football fields in size. So uh, large stuff, you know, a lot of steel, a lot of glass, a lot of lights uh, going up. And, and our construction team has, has been phenomenal. Uh, we're, we, we're getting close on just a couple of those facilities and, and plan on having all three up and running before the end of the year. Uh, and it does, we do get a diversified crop at that point. So uh, salad greens, a uh, variety of leafy greens, strawberries, uh, and a whole host of different variety of tomatoes that'll be uh, on grocery store st- shelves uh, all across the U.S. Um, one of the things that has been a theme of South by Southwest, and we've talked with a lot of VC folks about, is the number of companies that have remained private and have mm-hmm. gotten enormous, even though they're still staying private companies. You guys made the decision to come public, and the sort of class of 2021, if you will, of companies that came public, a lot of them are not doing so great. Unfortunately for you, App Harvest is, is among them. Do you regret coming public when you did? And, and how do you kind of now adapt to being a public company CEO? We, we, we see this as, as a couple decade journey and, and, and really we're in our first decade. Uh, and, and for us, you know, being transparent with not only the consumer, but, but having that transparency of, of a public company is we build a large, you know, global food company. Uh, we, we think the long-term benefits, you know, are, are, are great. And, and, and we do, you know, stand by kind of, you know, going and taking that message directly to the street and, and getting that, that rigor of Wall Street early, uh, which I think will make us stronger in the long run. But for us right now, it's just, you know, we have the capital we need and, and we're focused on building and operating uh, and, and just keep head down on execution. So, you know, right now it's just build and grow the business. But, you know, that, that term CEA, Controlled Environment Agriculture, uh, it's really the third wave of sustainable infrastructure. And, and you look at renewable energy 20 years ago, electric vehicles 10 years ago. If we want to get CEA, you know, to be institutional at scale, uh, not only in households with consumers, but I was in D.C. a week ago meeting with both sides of the aisle. You, know, you really need that rigor of the, of the public markets and that attention of the public markets to, to help institutionalize an industry. And, you know, for us at App Harvest, this isn't just about a company. You know, it's about getting the, the industry uh, to turn the corner at scale globally. And, and we don't think we could do that if we weren't in the public markets. And, and not just for CEA, but do you feel like for sustainability generally and mm-hmm. for su- companies that are trying to put forward various sustainable industries, um, do you feel like we need to have more of a public market wave to push that forward as well? 
Absolutely. I mean, we need, you know, innovate or die, right? And and that's literally, you know, Gen Z millennials that we were talking earlier about, you know, the optimism here at South by Southwest, you know, those those next innovative ideas are coming from the people wandering these streets here in Austin, and you know absolutely the the, the public markets needs needs to have a robust category of companies that that are, are, are building stuff that matters. You know tech for good, uh, the consumer wants it. Uh, you know the the, the reg regulators are pushing that direction. You, you obviously see the, the capital flowing into ESG, and, and yes, it might go up, it might go down, but you know, the reality is we're we're going to fix these problems through the private sector. The, these global problems that we all face will be fixed through good companies, uh, or we're going to be in a lot of trouble in 10, 20, 30 years from now. And, and I think my generation and even below, uh, we realize that we don't have a choice. You know, we have to build the companies, we have to work at the companies, you know, that are offering good solutions. And it's not going to be easy, and, and we're going to get punched along the way but you know i think it's that resiliency uh that i hope this generation uh is going to fight through and that mentality is going to is yes we're we're going to see more and more of this through the public markets and and more companies on wall street that actually matter versus you know are just out there selling a worthless product that that's not good for people not good for planet uh and arguably questionable for shareholders it, it's combining all that together that's the hard thing you know not just looking out for the next three months but doing that while also looking out for the next decade and the decade after, that's hard. Uh, it's easy to be a CEO that's looking for the next three months. It's hard to be the one that's looking two, two decades down the road while thinking of the here and now. Jonathan, thanks so much. Good stuff. Jonathan Webb of App Harvest. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Back to you guys.